you are about to witness are my thoughts on the uh, Zestava ZPAP M90S. A terse little video review, if you will. We'll try to answer the question of uh, whether or not it is worth the near $1,300 price tag. Anyways, let's get started. Here you have the Zestava M90 PS. As you were probably well aware, it uh, comes standard with this uh, Magpul Zukov folding and collapsible stock. The Magpul MOE AK hand grip. One plastic Zestava magazine, which does have a bolt hood open tab. Also comes standard with the Hogue USA front forearm, AK forearm. Uh, what it did not come with was uh, the Zestava Yugo optics mount. On which here I have a 6 hour, I think it was a Romeo 1, Romeo 5, excuse me, Romeo 5 red dot. I really like the additional Picatinny rail at a 45 degree angle. It's a nice touch. Uh, also, what was not included was this Strike Industries AK Dynacomp. Now, I have not shot this gun since adding the compensator. The reason why I wanted the compensator is surprisingly for a 5.56 AK, it does slap quite a bit. I did want to tame that uh, surprisingly intense recoil somewhat. Maybe I just need to stop being a pussy, I don't know. Being that I have not shot this gun since adding the compensator, it will need to be re-zeroed, of course. Zeroed to the compensator. So yeah, that is the Zestava M90S PAP in a nutshell. Of course I did buy a couple of steel magazines. You might hear complaints about the uh, plastic magazine it's wobbling. Only time will tell. I don't have enough experience as of yet to give you a definitive answer though. Well, that's a big shocker right there. I'm genuinely impressed. Seem to be shooting a little low. I did adjust elevation slightly. We'll see if there's any improvement. That didn't seem to change much, only maybe dropped slightly lower, showing a little more to the left. But that might be my fault. My uh, vision's pretty bad, I can barely see the, uh, the red dot in the center. I regret not labeling these or marking these. <laughs> it does make it kind of hard to distinguish uh, one from the other, but uh, <laughs> hey, I'm, uh, I'm not a professional, alright? Far from it. All right, now we are going to adjust it in the opposite direction since it only seemed to go a little lower. But uh, windage seems to be pretty good, actually. Uh, that compensator, by the way, reduces the uh, recoil to all but zero. Pleasantly surprised about that. All right, so let's give this the old college try. See, that had uh, even more of the opposite, opposite the intended effect. So I'll of course have to uh, adjust it in the opposite direction again. 
because uh, I'm a hack. See if that did the trick. Seemed to have uh, overcompensated quite a bit, but that's why we're uh, that's why we're out here testing the rifle. Of course, I'm not sure uh, how what how much of this is uh, due to stress on the barrel. All right, do a little do a little jig here for you. Entertain the people back at home. Okay. So we overcompensated last time. Trying to meet it in the middle here. See how this does. All right, seems I can't count for shit. Well, this is really not at all helpful. So the uh, ammo we were using before was either some of this, it's a standard American Eagle Federal 55 grain 5.56, or it was some of this. I really can't remember what I had in there. This is, of course, Frontier 55 grain, M193, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but what we're going to try now, we're going to try some of this 62 grain M855, 5.56. If this uh, fares any better with the uh, 1 to 8, uh, 1 to 8 inch twist ratio, supposedly, this is what I hear, but I don't know if that's true. Again, I'm not an expert. Supposedly, one and eight inch twist and uh, longer barrels, supposedly more conducive to accuracy with your heavier, heavier grade uh, ammo. And of course, after that, we are going to be trying some of this Frontier 75 grain 5.56 match ammo. Of course, I only brought 20 rounds of each of these, uh, especially the 75 grain because this shit's expensive. Isn't this entertaining? Aren't you glad you clicked on this video? All right, so we got five rounds of the green tip loaded in. We'll see how this fares. And we're going to shoot at the, uh, we're gonna shoot the top right target on the board over there. Well, let's get started. I think the rifle has had sufficient time to cool down. I am using the plastic mag with the bolt hold open to function. I want to put it off safety first. I know I'm probably not going to, to hit the center of the target. I just want to see where we're at. You can see the uh, bolt hold open functionality works as intended. Well, this is interesting. Now we're uh, we're still to the left, still to the left. We're far lower than we were with the 55 grain. I mean, it was not really a surprise. It's actually uh, rather pretty much as expected. We did get one. Well, we did manage to get one on the center of the target. I still haven't decided which grade of ammo I'm going to zero the rifle to just yet. Probably going to stick with the 62 grain simply because it's uh, far more abundant and cheaper than the 75 grain. 
Although if I could find a nice supply of 75, I'd probably go with that. Obviously, the uh, higher the grain, the more stopping power. And since this thing does have a about 18, 18.25, 18 and a half inch barrel, and a uh, one and eight inch uh, barrel twist ratio, that seems like the way to go, you know? Well, these are apparently, uh, not that you can tell from this video, but uh, these are apparently hollow points. These are uh, 75 grain uh, 556 five, bullets. That's interesting. I don't know how that's going to uh, affect my tests, but we'll see. some uh, range day ASMR going here for all you mad lads. All right, let's get started. We're going to try the 75 grain Frontier match ammo. Hollow point match, hollow point ammo apparently. We're going to aim at the uh, target on the bottom left this time. But again, we're using the same magazine as before, the one with the uh, bolt hood action uh, functionality. Can't get a good sight picture beyond all this grass, oh well. Just have to make do. Once again, the uh, bolt hold open functionality works as intended. Fortunately, it is only on the plastic mags. I don't know if you knew that already or not. Now, this is very interesting. I can already see it from here. Very interesting indeed. As you can see, we have two that hit dead center, two not too far in the uh, inner and uh, outer rings but uh, then we had one flyer way the fuck up there I don't know what the fuck happened there but uh it is interesting it is interesting and this was apparently match grade frontier ammo with Hornady bullets uh, apparently hollow points too but uh yes very very interesting results but what do they mean I was thinking I wanted to try one of those uh, 75 grain bullets on one of these. You can run, but you'll never run far enough. That was a little anticlimactic, don't you think? All right, enough of these uh, these fucking NATO shitty meme rounds. Let's get back to a classic. Warsaw classic. Yeah. Now that's more of the carnage I wanted to see. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the pumpkin's family isn't watching this video right now. This is what you all wanted, right, you sick fucks? 
So I've decided to uh, get into the spirit of Halloween by creating a jack-o'-lantern. Only instead of using candles, we're going to use something else entirely. Allah Akbar. Well, we <laughs> well, I uh, apologize if I got a little carried away in the making of this video. Kind of forgot what the point of the video was to make a uh, video review of the Zestava ZPAP M90S. I was having so much fun, you know, shooting the gun. What can I say? So, what are my thoughts on the Zestava ZPAP M90S? Well, might be a good investment if you're worried about the, uh, the dearth of cheap Russian Soviet ammo. You know, the Tulas and your Wolfs, whatnot, Bernals, as it's starting to dry up. You might want to look into uh, diversifying your uh, AK calibers if you were so inclined. Now the point of this video was to answer whether or not it was worth the near $1,300 price tag. Even though I had a lot of fun, uh, I'm just not sure if it justifies the expense. Then again, how many rifles in your gun safe do you really fire often enough to uh, justify the expense? I mean, honestly. I mean, as is, out of the box, as is, it's, uh, it's really neat. It's really neat, uh, it's very robust, very reliable. I've yet to have a jam on me. Then again, I've yet to have any of my Zestava AKs jam on me. I'd say if it was priced more reasonably as say, their sporterized versions of the M70s. Uh, of course, this is not, this is not stock at all, but when I bought it, it only paid, uh, I only paid 980 as opposed to the 1250 I paid for the M90. So yeah, if it were priced more around the range of the M70, I'd say yes, it's definitely worth 980 bucks, maybe 950, maybe even a thousand, hell. But uh, as it stands right now, it's really, it's priced competitively against other 5.56 AKs that are out there on the market. Um, well, you know, such as your, your FB Radom, Burials, uh, and whatever, whatever Arsenal's offering is, I forget what it's called. When priced against those rifles, this is obviously the cheapest, the most affordable, and and so given it's a, it's a Yugo, it's a, it's got the one and a half millimeter uh, receiver, the Bulge Trunnion, the uh, Hammer Forge barrel, chrome line Hammer Forge barrel. Uh, you get a lot, you get a solid, you get a complete package, is what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to get across here. Really, whether or not it's worth the uh, near $1,300 price tag is up to you. It, in the, at the end of the day, it's your money. Is it, is it worth 
it's worth the amount of uh, blood, sweat, and tears you would put into it. Um, I'm rather satisfied with my purchase, and uh, as much fun as I've had in the last 24 hours with this thing, I, I imagine I'll have even more hours of enjoyment. Oh yeah, for those of you who are still questioning about the uh, the plastic plastic mag wobble, it's there. I mean, I don't have I don't know if I have any AK magazines of any caliber that don't wobble, at least a little. Oh yeah, if you ever wanted to see Zukov stock collapsed, there you go. As with all AKs, it's definitely worth investing in a compensator. Maybe don't spring for the most expensive one like I did. Uh, it definitely does the job though. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention the adjustable gas setting. You're supposed to keep it on two to like break it in, in a break in period. Uh, and then for the range, just kind of keep it at a one. Uh, I still got it on the two because I don't think I've fired more than 500 rounds through it yet. I forget exactly how long the break-in period lasts, but it's something to consider. So yeah, ultimately, uh, <laughs> this video seems rather pointless, because uh, I don't think I can really settle the issue of whether or not it is worth the $1,200 or near $1,300 price tag, because uh, really, that's up to you. So that about does it for the review of uh, this rifle. Don't know if I really plan on doing more in the future, after all. Guns are expensive, but uh, if you just happen to enjoy my uh, schizophrenic review style, and, uh, then uh, go ahead and feel free to subscribe. This has been Natrid, signing off.